How's it going everyone? Puptart here, welcome back to the Airteam channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the Airbus A340-600 in 1 to 1 scale. The A340-600 is a 4 engine long haul wide body airliner. It's a derivative of the A340-300 series, featuring a larger wing, new massive and significantly more powerful Rolls-Royce Trent 500 engines, each producing around 60,000 pounds of force, nearly double the thrust of the old CFM-56 engines, and a fuselage stretch to a final length of 247 feet just three feet short of the longest airliner in the world, the 747-8. It first flew in 2001, ten years after the original A340 series, and served with airlines such as Virgin Atlantic, South African, and Iberia. Well, nearly all have now been retired, as operators shift away from fuel-hungry quad jets. Lufthansa still holds ten in active service out of Munich and Frankfurt. So, as for the build itself here, this was actually built as a part of our community build series, finished from scratch in about two hours flat with the help of many of our server members working together. It was a lot of fun, and I'm very much looking forward to the next one. If you'd like to see the whole process from start to finish, we have a time-lapse of this build session on the channel. There's a chart up on screen for it now. So, as I mentioned, this is in 1 to 1 scale, meaning that every 1 meter in real life is equivalent to 1 block exactly. If you are building an airport project, or something in this scale, this will be perfectly to scale with all of our other 1 to 1 aircraft on the channel. Now, before we get started, as always, this build does make use of our very own custom AeroTeam texture pack. A download link to the latest version of this pack can be found in the description below if you don't have it already. Now, if you are stuck using the default pack, if you're following along on console or something, I will always do my best to show you how to go about building this in default, but please do keep in mind that I highly recommend using the AeroTeam pack instead if you can, as it'll look much better. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get going on this tutorial! Alright, so first things first, here's some dimensions for you to help you figure out where you want to put this. This aircraft is 76 blocks long, 63 blocks wide, and 18 blocks tall, from the base of the landing gear to the tip of the vertical stabilizer. So just keep that all in mind as you're getting started. Now, as for materials, here in the AeroTeam pack we're using the wool material, coupled with the purpose stairs and slabs for the smooth and shiny white coloration for the aircraft. If you're building in default, you'll probably want to use quartz or smooth quartz as an alternative, so just use that instead whatever I'm building. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll be referring to these as the wool stairs and slabs, but again, that's the purple stairs and slabs here in the AeroTeam pack. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get started on the fuselage. Alright, so for layer 1, if you are building this aircraft landed on the ground, as I am here, you'll be wanting to start three blocks off the ground, with a two block gap in between. Like so. If you're building this in flight, then you can obviously just start wherever you'd like, and you won't have to worry about that, but please do keep in mind that two block gap otherwise. So, for this layer here, We'll be starting with a total of 15 wool top slabs going back. So we have one there already to start with. That'll be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Now on either side, going forwards from this, we have 14 wool top slabs. So from that last block right there, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Same thing on the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Next, going back right here, only on the left side, we're going to place a single quartz top slab. Now, if you're in default and already building the aircraft out of quartz, then you'll probably want to use something like polished diorite for accent details such as this, but we're using quartz here in the AeroTeam pad. Next, we have a single wool upside down stair facing forwards, like this, for an antenna on the underside of the aircraft, and a wool top slab on the right side. Then a single row of three wool top slabs across the center right there then one wall top slab on either side, and then we have a polished granite stairs, upside down, facing uh, backwards, just like this. In the AeroTeam pack here, this is a red concrete texture, just use bricks instead in default. And behind this, we have a white wool full block, with a uh, an upside down wall stair facing forwards out to either side right here. Behind this, we're going to place a single white wool full block in the center. On the left side only, a quartz bottom half slab right there. It might as well make it a full block, even though it won't be exposed from the outside. There'll be a top slab covering up in a moment. But then we can just place a single white wolf full block on the right side right there. Now that we have those in place, we can mess with these stairs a little bit to get them to be more realistic to the shaping that we need. So what we're going to be using for this is a mod called World Edit. So for this, we're going to grab a stick, or any old item, type the command slash ripple zero to switch this over to the replace tool. And the first thing we're going to do is with this stair right here, the polished granite stair, We'll place one just anywhere in the world facing backwards, then one in front of it facing to the right side, like so. So it only has that forward left connection. Then we'll select that corner stair with the world edit replace tool there, switch to another item to clear both of these out, 
Then back to the stick. Paste over that upside down stair right there. This is for a small red painted antenna on the underbelly of the aircraft here that's slightly offset from the center. So that's what that's representing there. And if you don't have access to world edit for uh, this trick and other tricks like this throughout the rest of the build, you can just leave these out and leave them as they are uh, in default. You'll still have an A340 by the end of it, so it doesn't make a huge difference, but it does help to build to bring just a little bit more to life, so we do like to include them when we can. So, speaking of which, the next one we're going to do right here is to curve off the wing box just a little bit more here. So to better match the curvature of the real aircraft's belly fairing here, we're going to place a uh, an upside down wall stair facing forwards anywhere, then one in front of it facing to the right side. So you should have a corner stair with the three connections this time. We'll select that, then paste over that left side corner stair right there. Then we can clear out that one in front of it. This time it'll be one facing to the right. Then we'll select that there and paste it over the right stair. So you should have something looking just like this. Once we have that, we're next going to place a row of three wool across the center right here. One, two, and three. And make this a three by three box. So that's a second and third layer right there. Next in the center here, we're going to place two blocks of wool going back. Underneath the first one there, we're going to place a single dark oak button aligned parallel with the aircraft, like this. In the RTM pack here, the dark oak button is a red button texture. This will be for the beacon light on the underbelly of the aircraft here. In default, just use an acacia button instead for a kind of reddish hue for that. But once we have that, we're next going to be placing two upside down wall stairs facing in towards the center right here on both sides. One and two right there, and right there as well. And then a single row of three wool across the center right here. One, two, and three. Out to the sides right here, we're going to be placing a row of seven wool top slabs going forwards. So starting right to the side of that last row of three that we placed right there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Same thing on the right as well. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Like so. And now we're going to use a little bit more world edit trickery, just like we did up there, to get these into corner stairs as well. So for this, what we're going to want to do is place an upside down wall stair just anywhere facing towards the left, like this. One facing backwards, forwards from it, like so. Grab the replace tool, select that corner stair there, and then paste over the forward corner stair on the right side. Then one facing forwards behind that sideways stair, like this. Select that and paste over right there. Then we can knock out that center stair between the two and replace it with one facing to the right, like so. So let that forward stair there, paste it over the forward stair on the left side this time, and the rear stair, paste it over the rear one right there. Again, not a crucial detail to include if you don't have access to world edit, but it does help the curvature a little bit more. These are for the pack inlets for the air conditioning system on the underbelly of the aircraft right here. Once we have that, we're going to be placing a single block of wool in the center right there. One more to the right, like so. Then we're going to grab the light gray glazed terracotta, which in the Aeroteam pack here is a kind of black-white vent texture like this. So we're going to be placing this right to the left, right there, in, in that empty space right there. Now, the terracotta has four different orientations. In the Aeroteam pack, two of these have, uh, well, horizontal stripes like this, two of them have vertical stripes. So we want the one where the stripes are kind of facing perpendicular with the aircraft. So we're going to rotate it around to uh, be oriented just like this. So that'll be the correct vent texture we want for this detail here. Otherwise, if you're in default, you could probably just use some sort of grayish block like a cobblestone or something for that detail instead. But once we have that, it's going to be a uh, single block of wool to the left right there, and one more on the right. I missed that uh, previously there. And then we have a set of five wool across the center right here. One, two, three, four, and five. Next, from the left side only here, we're going to be placing two blocks of wool going in, then an upside down stair facing to the left, a full block of wool to the right there, and then another upside down stair facing to the left. Then behind this here, we're going to be placing uh, a single white wool full block in the center right there. One more out to either side to get a row of three. Then we're going to switch over to the quartz full block, and we have a quartz block out to either side, like so. There we go. And with that strip in place now, we can then use World Edit to once again corner off these upside down stairs here, now that the blocks around them have finished getting block updates. So for these, we just want to torter them off so that they're facing forwards as well. So for this, we can actually just grab some of the ones that we already have here. So that's going to be the one facing to the left right here. Well, this rear right one, torted just like this. We'll select that one and then paste it over both of these right here. Oops, not that one. My bad. That one. There we go. The same orientation for both of these, so it should look just like this. Again, for another set of uh, inlet vents on the underside right here. 
Once we have that, we're next going to grab the quartz slab. We have a quartz top slab out from either of these, well not either, but out from both of these quartz full blocks. Then a set of five blocks of quartz across the center. Full blocks. One, two, three, four, and five. This will be three rows in total. So we have one row there already. That's going to be two and three, like so. And then three more quartz top slabs out to the side right here. One, two, and three. And one, two, and three. So this will be creating the gear doors for both the outboard main landing gear here and the center gear. So once we have that, we'll be placing five blocks of wool across the center. One, two, three, four, and five with a wool top slab out to either side right there. Then another row of five. One, two, three, four, and five. This time a birch trapdoor out to either side right here. In the arrow team pack, this is a wool tetzer. Just use an iron trapdoor instead in default. Next up, we're gonna grab a lever here. And in from this last wool top slab right there, from this wool full block, we're gonna place a lever on the underside right there, flitch facing backwards. This will only be on the left side of the aircraft right here. This uh, uh, antenna is asymmetrical, so it only goes in place there. Then, from the left side only here, again, more asymmetry, that'll be four, not four, three blocks of wool going in, uh, in to the aircraft. One, two, and three, right there. Then a block of quartz, right there. And a full block of wool. And on either side, another set of birch trapdoors. Oops. Like so. Next, we have three wool full blocks across the center. One, two, and three. With the wool top slab out to either side. Then a row of five wool top slabs. One, two, three, four, and five. A second row of five. One, two, three, four, and five. Next up, from the second block in on the right side only right here, from this one, we're going to be placing nine wool top slabs going back. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Then in towards the center, on the center row right here, we have five wool top slabs going forwards. One, two, three, four, and five. Then with the wool stairs, two upside down wool stairs facing forwards for another set of antennas on the underside of the aircraft right here. And then two wall top slabs going forwards from that to close up that gap. On the left of this right here, it's going to be five wall top slabs going back. One, two, three, four, and five. Then a single quartz top slab right here. And then three wall top slabs going back. One, two, and three. Lastly, from the center block only, we have one single wall top slab right there. And with that, that is everything for layer one. Alright, so for layer two here, we'll be starting from this foremost wall top slab from the previous layer. Forwards at an angle from this, we're going to place a single quartz half slab on the bottom half right there. Then two more going forwards. On the underside of that forwardmost one right there, we have a jungle button aligned parallel, not parallel, perpendicular with the aircraft like this. In the air team pack here, as you can see, this is a white button texture. You can just use a birch button instead in default for a kind of whitish texture. But this will be starting off the nose gear doors right here. Then forwards from this right here, we have a wool top slab with one more going forwards. The 340 has a very pointy nose. But from this, we're going to be placing a single wool half slab, or top slab, out to either side of that rearmost one of the two right there, with one more going backwards from both of those. Next, on the right side only right here, we have three blocks going back, full blocks of wool that is, one, two, and three. Behind this here, we're going to be placing three quartz bottom half slabs right here, so that's one, two, and three there. Out to the side of that last wool full block there, we have a single wool top slab, and then three quartz top slabs going back. This will be starting off the forward cargo door. Then behind this we have 15 blocks of wool. Full blocks going back from the half slab right there on the bottom half. So that's one right there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. And then nine wool top slabs going back from the quartz top slabs right there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. On the left side right here, we have 21 wool full blocks going back from that top slab. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. That should align flush right there with the right side. Back up to the front here, we're going to be skipping these first two wool full blocks. From the third wool full block back right here, we have a wool top slab out to the side. This will be 13 in total. So that's one there already. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Should align with the right side right there. Now out to either side right here, we're going to be placing two temporary blocks on the left side of these two wool top slabs right there. Then we have a stone button on the left side of this temporary block here. We'll grab the world that it replaced tool again, select that stone button there, clear it out, and then right click to paste over those two temporary blocks like so. And this will be for a set of static ports on the side of the aircraft right here. 
If you don't have the replace tool, you can use uh, the debug stick in Minecraft, or in vanilla Minecraft instead, to rotate these around. But if you don't know how to use that, or don't have access to it or anything, you can just leave this out if you have to. But it does add just a little bit more life to the aircraft, of course. So, same thing on the right side as well. So, two temporary blocks there. Stone button on the right side this time. Select with world edit and paste over, like so. And back from both of these right here, we have six wall top slabs. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And one, two, three, four, five, six to bring it in line with the wall full blocks there. Next, we have ten wall full blocks back from the top slabs this time. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Next, we're gonna grab the diorite and place one of these back from both of these full block rows right there. In the arrow team pack here, the diorite is a grey brick texture, like this. You can just use uh, stone bricks instead for kind of dark grey texture like this. But behind this here, we have three dark oak trapdoors on the top half. One, two, and three. And one, two, and three. Again, in the arrow team pack, this is that very same texture to blend. Just use iron trapdoors instead in default. On the inside right here, we're going to be placing three more diorite full blocks. One, two, and three. And one, two, and three to close up that gap there then one behind both of these uh, trapdoors, like so. And these little pods in here will be creating the deer wells, which are just slightly visible when the landing gear is extended. But we'll be covering this up for now, with a single white wolf full block to the left side of that first trapdoor right there, then three more going back, one, two, and three, to make a row of four. On the right side as well, a wolf full block right there, and two, three, and four, like so. Next we have a wall stair facing backwards, oops, that's a trapdoor, wall stair facing backwards, and a slab right there. Stair facing backwards, and a slab right there. Then in towards the center of that stair there, we have a total of six wall full blocks. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now as you'll notice here, this little bit bulges out from the uh, fuselage itself. So the A340 has a kind of uh, bulge at the root of the uh, wing right here, which then blends into the belly fairing. So that's that little bit of curvature we have going on there. So, next up from this, we have three wool top slabs going back from both of these rows right here. One, two, and three. And one, two, and three. Like so. From here, well, let's be grabbing the stone buttons again. And we have two temporary blocks off to the left side of these last two wool slabs right there. Stone button to the left here, grab the replace tool again. Select that with the left click, and then paste over those two temporary blocks there. For another set of static ports on the side of the fuselage here. Same thing on the right side, those last two blocks there, two temporary blocks, stone block on the or stone button on the right side, and then paste over there. Next, on both sides here, actually only on the left side, we have five wool top slabs going back. This is asymmetrical. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And then all the way back up to the front here, starting on the inside of this top slab there to close up that gap, we have twelve wool full blocks going back. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. On the right side here, we just have three more wall top slabs going back from this set right here. So that's one, two, and three. Then with the quartz top slabs, we have three quartz top slabs going back. One, two, and three. Back up to the front here, from this wall top slab, we have six blocks going back. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then three bottom half quartz half slabs. One, two, and three. And this will start the aft cargo door here. So, back from this now, we have just a single wolf full block behind that quartz slab right there, and then a quartz full block behind this, like so. Then, one more wolf full block back from that there to bring that in line. Then in from this wolf full block right there on the right side, we'll be placing four blocks going back in the center row here to close this up. One, two, three, and four. Like so. And by the way, that quartz full block right there is for the bolt cargo door behind the uh, main cargo door right there. But then back from this here, in the center, we have three wool top slabs. One, two, and three. And on either side, two wool top slabs going back. One and two, and one and two. Like so. And that will be everything for layer two. Alright, so for layer three here, we'll be starting from this wool top slab from the previous layer, with a single wolf full block forwards from it at an angle, like so. We have a single wool top slab forwards from this, then one more out to either side of the full block, like so. And back from both of these top slabs here, we have four wolf full blocks going back. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. Next, with the stone buttons, we're going to place a single stone button underneath the four most exposed wool on that outer layer right there. Not the single one in the center, but underneath the four. One stone button aligned parallel with the aircraft, just like this. Same thing on the right side as well. 
And then on the side here, on the second block back, we have another stone button right there. And same thing on the right side as well. Skipping the first block, second block back, stone button on the right side there. This will be for the band of angle of attack veins and pedo tubes wrapping around the underside of the nose right here. But once we have that, we have a single quartz top slab out to the side of the last wolf full block right there, on both sides. With a wolf full block behind both of these, and then a target block behind both of these here. On the sides of this target block, we have a stone button, like so. This will be for the uh, static ports on the side of the nose here, with the red markings around them. Next, on the right side only here, we have three quartz full blocks going back, one, two, and three, for the forward cargo door there, that'll finish that off. And then we have 35 wolf full blocks going back. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, and thirty-five. On the left here, that's just going to be 49 wolf full blocks in total. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, and 49. Like so. So to bring the right side in line with this here, we're first going to place a single stone button on the right side of that last wolf block on the right side here. And that'll be for another static port on the fuselage that's not present on the left side. We have seven blocks going back from this now. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And to the side of this here, another jungle button, like so. Or again, perch button in default. Then three quartz full blocks going back. One, two, and three, to finish off the aft cargo door here. And then a single wolf full block right there. That should be right in line with the left side now. So, from both of these here, we have an upside-down wolf stair facing backwards, and a wolf top slab. Upside-down stair and top slab, there. Into the center of that, or into the, <laughs> inside of that stair right there, going back, we're going to place five wolf full blocks to close this off. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And one, two, three, four, and five. Another upside-down stair facing backwards, and a top slab. Upside-down stair and top slab. Then into the center of that stair there, one, two, and three wolf full blocks. And a wall top slab behind that there. And with that, that'll be everything for layer 3. Alright, so for layer 4 here, we've now reached the very tip of the nose, so we'll just be placing a single wall half slab on top of that top slab from the previous layer right there. We have a wall full block behind that, then a half slab out to either side, like so. Next, three wall full blocks back from both of these slabs here. One, two, and three. And one, oops, one, two, and three. Then out at an angle here, one wolf full block on top of both of those top slabs there. And then a single quartz full block back from both of these wool blocks there to start off the forward doors. Out to the side of this here we have a stone button for the handles on the sides of the doors. And then a total of ten wolf full blocks going back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Out from this last wolf full block there, we have a single torch on the side right there. In the routine pack, as you can see here, this is a custom lamp model. In default, you can just use either a stone button or perhaps an upside-down wool stair or something. But this detail here will be representing the wing lights, illuminating the leading edge of the wing to check for icing. So that's why we're using the torch model here. So behind this, we have two more wool full blocks, one and two, and another torch on the side right there. The A340 actually has a double set of wing lights, so that's what's going on there. Same thing on the right side as well, so 10 blocks going back, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Torch on the right, 2 more blocks and another torch right there, with the 1 block spacing between. Next we have 4 wolf full blocks going back on both sides, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, 2, 3, and 4. And another quartz full block going back, and a button on the side. Quartz full block going back, stone button on the side right there. Then we have a total of 9 wolf full blocks going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And then a quartz full block behind it right there. Now this one will not have a button on the side, because this will be starting off the smaller overwing emergency exit doors, which have a slightly different design than the uh, rest of the main exit doors here. So even though we don't really have the room to represent that scale difference in 1 to 1 here, that handle's just in a slightly different place. So, same thing on the right side here, that'll be 9 blocks going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Quartz full block there, no button this time. Then 13 blocks going back, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 
and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Quartz full block behind, and this time another stone button out to the side, back to our usual large exit doors, and on the right side as well. Quartz full block there, and a stone button on the right side. Next we have 12 wool full blocks going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Then stepping in towards the center here, one wool full block at an angle, like so. And then a quartz full block behind both of these here, with one more stone button out to the sides. And that'll be for the very last set of doors right here. Next behind this here, we have three wool full blocks on both sides. One, two, and three. And one, two, and three. Wool top slab behind both of these. Wool full block in the center to close up that gap, with one more going back. Wool upside down stair facing backwards, and a wool top slab behind that there. And with that, that'll be everything for layer 4. Alright, so for layer 5 here, we'll be starting on top of this wool full block from the previous layer. We're going to place a temporary block going up from this here, with a wool top slab behind it, and then clear out that temporary block. So you have a top slab at an angle just like this. Next, another top slab out to either side at an angle, uh, going back just like this. And then two wool full blocks going back. One and two, and one and two, leaving that center space open there. This will be forming off the cockpit glass. Next up here we have a quartz top slab behind both of these full blocks, and a half slab out to either side, like so, to finish off the forward doors there. Then, behind these half slabs here, the outer ones, we have 14 upside down wool stairs facing backwards. So, one, like so, upside down facing backwards. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. On the right side as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Then we have a wolf full block behind this right there, and an upside down wolf stair facing forwards this time, like so. Upside down wolf stair facing forwards. There's just a single uh, window that's blocked off in that space right there in the real world. Then behind this we have a quartz stair, not a quartz stair, a quartz full block to finish off this next set of doors here. Then three upside down wolf stairs facing backwards. 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. And a wolf full block behind both of these right here. And this time, uh, 5 upside down wolf stairs facing forwards. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Like so. Again, another window blocked off in that space right there. So, on the right side as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Like so. Next, we have a, uh, another quartz full block behind us right here. And this is that uh, different design for the overwing exit door I mentioned, so we now have a stone button going out to the side of that top lock there instead. Stone button on the right side there. Then we have a total of 12 upside down wall stairs facing backwards, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Like so. Next here we have a single wall full block. And then a, uh, a uh, full block of quartz to finish off this next set of doors right there. Upside down stair facing backwards, and a wolf full block right there. Upside down stair facing backwards, and a full block. Then we have eight upside down wolf stairs facing forwards. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Like so. I'm just going to start the right side in line with this here so I can work forwards. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Like so. Next here, we're going to place a single upside down, or not upside down, a regular wall stair this time, facing forwards. Like so. And the same thing on the right side as well. And then a wall half slab behind this here. In towards the center, we have another wall stair facing forwards, and then one more behind it. Like this. Wall stair facing forwards, and one more behind it. And then a full block of quartz behind both of those stairs there. So see, we've switched directions now with the upside down to regular stairs. This is because the, uh, the floor deck on the A330 and A340 series kind of curves upwards towards the last few windows right here, and the windows follow that pattern as well. So that's what that's representing there. So behind both of these quartz full blocks here, we now have four wool full blocks going back. One, two, three, and four. And one, two, three, and four. Next here, we're going to place a single smooth stone full block behind both of these here. Then in towards the center at an angle, one smooth stone full block right there. And then a redstone ore, like this. This is just a borderless smooth stone texture in the Aerotean pack here for a little bit of contrast. In default you can just use stone instead. 
This will be representing the stabilizer trim here around the horizontal stabilizers. So behind this now, we have a single wall full block right there, then an upside down wall stair facing backwards, and a wall top slab, and then a birch trap door behind this, like so. For our last detail, we're next going to grab the jungle button and place that aligned parallel with the aircraft underneath that uh, exposed wall full block right there. And with that, that'll be everything for layer 5. Alright, so to cap off the fuselage, we now have layers 6 and 7. So we'll be starting from this wool top slab from the previous layer right here. Back from this, we're going to drop a wool half slab right here, in between these three slabs right there. Behind this, we have one more wool half slab going back, and then a long row of 62 wool full blocks. So, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, and 62. Like so. All the way back up to the front now. We're going to be dropping a single wool half slab out from both sides of that rearmost one right there, just like this. So you should have some curvature at the forehead looking like that. And then one more wool half slab going back from both of those there. Next, on both sides, we have a long row of 59 wool full blocks going back. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, and 59. On the right side here, I won't bother counting that since we've already done two long rows there already, so we'll just bring that right in line with the left side, which will be two blocks short of the center row. So, and we'll return to this uh, tail cone layering here in a little bit later. So next up here, on the sides, where we have the stairs for the windows right here, you'll notice in this last little section of windows where it curves up, this last stair right here in the outermost layer has this kind of hole exposed through the top because it's a regular stair. So to fix this, we're going to drop a single white carpet on top of it right here. And then to fix up this little kind of inconsistency in the layering, where there's a single pixel difference between this and the rest of the layer, we're going to fix this by dropping a carpet on top of every single block in this outer layer right here to make everything nice and completely flush along the top. So we'll just drop a carpet all the way down and filling up any gaps that's going to go on top of every stair, full block, everything on this outer layer right here. 52 carpets in total if you want to count, but you really don't have to because we're not going to be doing anything other than just dropping it right in line with that last block right there. So because it's just a single pixel difference there, you cannot obviously tell the difference in the layering from the sides outwards like this, but it would be obvious if there was a single pixel jump right there. And we like to keep our layering very consistent, so this is the solution we're using here. So we'll just do the same thing on the right side now. So that'll be a carpet on top of that stair right there, and bring this all the way across that outermost layer. Like. Almost. Like so. There we go. So, next up here, we'll continue on with the top fuselage detailing. So, first of all, we're going to be starting from this... Well, we'll just be working down the uh, center block in this uh, row right here. So, from the center block, skipping the first two blocks, that's one and two. On the third block back right here, we're going to drop a jungle button aligned perpendicular with the aircraft, like so. I think I've already used the jungle button somewhere around here. Maybe I haven't. If I haven't, uh, if you aren't already familiar, the jungle button is a white wall texture here in the Aeroteam pack to blend. Just use a birch or stone button in default instead. But next up here, we'll be skipping this next full block right here. On the second block back, we have a lever flipped facing backwards for a larger radio antenna on top right here. Next, skipping three blocks back. That's one, two, and three. On the fourth block, we have a birch trapdoor here, and a single snow layer, like so, for the small curvature of the SATCOM antenna right there in the forward bit fuselage. Next, we'll be skipping a total of 18 full blocks. So I'm going to grab a temporary block right here, something that'll obviously stick out from the build. So that'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Next up here, we're going to grab the dark oak button 
and place this on top right here, aligned parallel with the aircraft this time. This will be in the Aeroteam pack here a red button texture. Just use an acacia button instead in default for an orangish red texture, because this will be the anti-collision beacon light on the top of the fuselage right here. So once we have that, we can clear out those temporary blocks. Then from the beacon light there, we're going to be skipping two blocks going back, one and two. On the third block right here, we have another jungle button aligned parallel with the aircraft. Then skipping nine blocks back, I'll use the temporary blocks again for this longer section. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then we have a lever flitch facing backwards, like so. Then from this here, we're going to be skipping ten blocks going back. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then we have another lever flitch facing backwards, like so. And as a final sanity check, from this point here, we should have seven blocks back until the end of the outer layers right here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That lines up, and we're good. So we can now clear out these last sections of the temporary blocks there. And the last thing for this layer will be the tail cone layering right here. So first off, we'll grab the... Well, I can just grab it from here. The smooth stone and redstone ore from the previous layer. So going back from the wall in the center right here, we have a single smooth stone full block, then a redstone ore right there, and a smooth stone full block behind. Then we have three wall full blocks, one, two, and three. And then on the rear face of this block right here, we're going to place a bubble coral fan. In the arrow team pad here, this is a smooth stone, not a smooth stone, a stone brick vertical slab on the rear edge of this block here. This will be for the APU exhaust at the tail tone of the aircraft here. If you're in default without vertical slabs, then you can just use a uh, probably a stone brick wall on the side right here. So something like this to give you kind of that partial block uh, shape curvature for the uh, APU exhaust there. But this is a much cleaner option that we're using here in the Aeroteam pack. So next up here, underneath this, we're going to place a temporary block on the underside right there. Then a stone button will land parallel with the aircraft right here. Grab your replace tool, select that, and paste over. And then only on the left side of this last of the three wolf hole blocks there, a single stone button on the left side right there for a small vent on the tail cone. Then, lastly, we're going to grab the smooth stone slabs. Here we are. And uh, back to this section right here on the outer layers, we have a single wool half slab back from both of those wool full blocks. And then a smooth stone half slab going back right there to finish off the stabilizer trim and a bit of that curvature for that layer there. And with that, that is everything for layer 6 and 7, and the fuselage is done. Alright, so next up here, we'll be putting in the vertical stabilizer. So, for this, we'll come down to the tail cone right here, where we have these three wolf full blocks. We'll be placing a single wolf full block on top of the four most of those three right there. Then, behind this, we have an upside down wolf stair facing backwards. Then, a single wolf full block above this right here. Then, back at an angle, we have three wolf full blocks going up. So, that's one, two, and three, like so. Then, a wolf top slab behind that top block right there. Two wolf full blocks going up, one and two. Then one wolf full block back at an angle right there. On top of this, we now have a single full block of quartz, like so. And then I forgot to grab this from my inventory, but a uh, quartz half slab on top of this. Going forwards from that now, we have a wool half slab going forwards there. Then a birch trap door on the forward face, with a wool full block underneath. This is going to repeat for a total of eight of these trapdoors here with this exact same pattern. So we have a trapdoor there with a wolf full block underneath, trapdoor going forwards, wolf full block underneath, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, like so. Next, this bit of curvature here will round out with the dorsal straight connecting this to the fuselage here. So we have a single wolf half slab forwards from that there, wolf full block underneath. Another wolf full block going forwards, wolf half slab forwards there, and then a set of two snow layers, like so. Next, we're going to grab the quartz blocks again, and from the quartz full block at the tip of the tail right here, we're going to place one going down at an angle, like so. Then a set of two blocks going down, then two blocks going down there, then just one diagonally, and then two blocks going down diagonally. Well, not diagonally, but down at an angle, like this. This will be for the rudder outline here, on the trailing edge of the vertical stabilizer. And the last thing we can do here is to place three temporary blocks 
behind the uh, slab and full blocks, like so. On top of this, we're going to place a stone button aligned parallel with the aircraft like this, select that, and then paste over all three temporary blocks, like so. And this will be for the static wicks coming off of the tip of the vertical stabilizer here. And once that's done, we can fill everything in here, inside of this outline, with the wolf full block. So, those two bits there, uh, inside of the rudder outline, and then everything else as well, with the wolf full block. Like so. And that is everything for the vertical stabilizer. Alright, so for the horizontal stabilizers here, we'll be coming to the stabilizer trim and the tail cone of the aircraft right here. From this forward most smooth stone full block right there, we're going to be placing a stone top slab out to the side right here. Not a smooth stone, but a regular stone right here. Next, we have another one out at an angle, diagonally, like so. Then one diagonally up a half slab layer. Then one more, diagonally. Then a set of two out at an angle, one and two. Then one diagonal, oops, diagonal, like so. Then one diagonal up a slab layer. And then one and two more diagonally, like so. Behind this, we're now going to place a smooth stone slab going directly back, like this. Then we're going to switch over to the stone brick slabs for the elevator detailing on the trailing edge, just a little bit of it here for now, with one directly in towards the center, like so. Then two in towards the center. Then one in towards the center. Next, directly in towards the center, dropping down a slab layer with the smooth stone now. We have one and two smooth stone slabs. Then uh, two smooth stone slabs in towards the center. And then two in towards the center, like so. That should connect up with the middle of the three uh, wall full blocks from the uh, tail cone right there. And then next we'll be putting in the layering outlines here. So, starting at the leading edge, where we have this first layer up right here, where the smooth stone goes up a layer, like this. Not the smooth stone, sorry, the regular stone. From this, we're going to be placing two smooth stone slabs going in back at an angle, like this. And then one back at an angle, like so. And for our next and final layer right here, where we have this regular stone slab right there, just a single smooth stone slab going in towards the center, like so. And before we fill all this in here, we're just going to finish off the elevator detailing. So where we have this last uh, stone brick slab right there, where we have the two smooth stone slabs in towards the center from it there, we're going to place two stone brick slabs going forwards from both of those right there. Then from this line, one diagonally, then a set of two uh, in towards the center, like so. And then this last one will go diagonal to it right here and down a slab layer. So between those two smooth stone slabs situated just like this. That'll finish off the uh, outline there for the elevator detailing on the trailing edge. Next, everywhere that's within the outline of the uh, horizontal stabilizer here and the outline for the next layer up is going to get filled in with the smooth stone. So, just like this. Everything in this space, and everything in here. Like so. So the last thing for the horizontal stabilizers now will be to put in the static wicks just as we did with the vertical stabilizer there. So, we'll grab a temporary block, and we have a temporary block behind the outer three blocks on the trailing edge right here. So that's one, two, and three, like so. Next, we'll place a stone button on the underside of this temporary block, aligned parallel with the aircraft here. Select that with the Replace tool, clear it out, and then paste over all three of those temporary blocks, like so. And while we're here, before we carry on with the right side now, uh, I would like to make a tiny little correction to the uh, tail cone right here. I had you place this button aligned perpendicular, but not perpendicular, aligned parallel with the aircraft, like this. It's supposed to actually go parallel with the aircraft on our reference model. So we'll clear that out and aligned parallel on the under... Um, <laughs> words on the underside right there. Select that and then paste over the temporary block right there. This is for a small little fairing on the underside of the APU right here, housing the anti-collision strobe lights and everything, so it has this kind of wider, flatter look like this. Again, not too much of a big, huge deal at all, that's why I'm not going back and re-recording it, but if you would like to fix that, that's how it's supposed to be. So, once we have that, we can now carry on with the right side. So, from the uh, smooth stone full block right there, that solitary one on the front, We'll place a single regular stone top slab out right there, then one diagonally, one diagonally up a slab layer, then one more diagonal from that, then two going out right here, then one diagonal up a slab layer, one diagonal right here, then two diagonal, one and two, like so. Smooth stone slab behind that there, then a single stone brick slab in towards the center, directly in towards the center that is. Then, at an angle, two stone brick slabs going in right there. 
then one diagonal, like so. Directly in towards the center, down a slab layer. One and two bottom half smooth stone slabs right there. Then two smooth stone slabs, and another two smooth stone slabs right there. Connecting with that same uh, wolf full block in the center, those three right there. Next, for the layering outlines, from the first layer up right there, that smooth stone slab there. Not smooth stone, regular stone. I always call it that. Ugh. We have two smooth stone slabs this time, going in towards the center there, and then one more uh, in towards the center, like so, connecting up with the trailing edge there. And for the outer one right there, just one going directly in towards the center from that stone slab there. To finish off the elevator outlines now, uh, that'll be two stone brick slabs forged from those two right there, carrying on that line there. Then one diagonal from that there, then two in towards the center, then one diagonal and down a slab layer right there between those two, like so. Then everything in here is going to get filled in with a smooth stone slab, and in this outline up here, and in the outer outline, like so. And to finish off the static widths, one, two, and three temporary blocks, stone button underneath aligned parallel with the aircraft, select and paste over all three of those, like so. And that is everything for the horizontal stabilizers. Alright, so next up here we'll be putting in the wings of the A340. So we'll be starting right down at the wing box right here, where this outermost layer of the fuselage transitions from the top slabs into the full blocks. On the outer edge of this very first full block right there, we're going to place a single spruce sign. Next, going back here, we have a dead tube coral fan, and then a single smooth stone full block right here. So on the A340 wing, the leading edge blends into the fuselage with this little fairing bulge right here that's kind of not really seen on too many other aircraft. But now for the resource pack notes on this, as you'll notice here, this dead tube coral fan is a vertical slab right here, the smooth stone vertical slab that is, and the spruce trap, not trap door, the spruce sign is a uh, stone texture like this to blend in. Now, if you are in default without either of these, what you'll probably want to do is use a stone wall for the vertical slab in place of that there. And then, since you won't have a gray sign at all, you can probably just use a trapdoor instead in that place there to kind of blend in a little bit more and give that indication. But this is a much nicer uh, option for showing that here if you do have access to the aero team pack. So, making our way back now from this, we're going to continue on with the wing root outline. So, on top of this smooth stone full block right here, the full block, we're going to place a single jungle trapdoor right there. I don't think we've used this in the tutorial yet, but in the arrow team pack here, this is a smooth stone trapdoor texture. Again, just use an iron trapdoor in default. Then going back from this here, we have a total of six smooth stone half slabs on the bottom half. So, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then dropping down a slab layer, we have two smooth stone top slabs going back right there. And that'll connect in with this bit of the uh, belly fairing that I mentioned back when we were doing the fuselage. So from here, out to the side of the foremost wolf full block, we're going to place another smooth stone top slab right there, with one more going back, and then a single stone brick top slab, like so. This will be starting off the flap detailing and the trailing edge, we'll get to that later on, but that will be the uh, extent of the uh, wing root outline right there. So working our way back forwards from this now, we'll next return to this uh, quartz top slab right there. And forwards from this, we have a total of six jungle trapdoors on the top edge. More again, iron trapdoors. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six, like so. Then going up right here in this space, we're just going to have a single smooth stone half slab on the bottom half right there to connect in with the forward edge of the wing root outline there. So once we have the wing root in place, well, let's be working on the leading edge. So from this smooth stone full block right there, we're next going to place a smooth sandstone stair back at an angle like this, coming out of that bottom half slab right there. In the R-Team pack here, the smooth sandstone stairs is a smooth stone texture. You can just use a uh, stone brick, not stone brick, a uh, regular stone stair in default instead. But from this, we're going to place a temporary block going forwards right there, then a torch on its forward face, with the replace tool select and paste over. Uh, oops, paste over there. And that'll be for the landing light embedded in the wing root right here. So, once we have that, we'll next be switching over to the uh, regular smooth stone... Uh, <laughs> Not regular smooth stone, regular stone slabs, with one diagonal from that stair right there. This will be for the darker texture of the leading edge slats right here. So next we have one more slab on top of that right there. And then we're going to quickly drop another jungle trapdoor on top of that uh, upside down stair right there to finish off that bit of the leading edge outline. 
then from the top, one of those two slots that we placed, we have directly out to the side, one more right there. Then one going diagonal from it there. Next, we're going to grab a temporary block. I'm going to use blue concrete, since it sticks out from the gray of the wing. This will be sitting here for a little while, so you'll want to make sure to use something that you can recognize later. But for this, we're going to place one going directly out to the side of that slab right there, and one going forwards from it. This will be the marker for our first engine pylon when we get to that later on. So, back to our stone slabs. I'm just going to clear out my inventory a little bit here. We're then going to place one more uh, stone slab on the bottom half going behind that right there. Then directly out to the side and up a slab layer, one top slab, like so. Then we have two top slabs going diagonal from this here, so that's one and two, like this. Then a set of two going out to the side at an angle right here, so that's one and two. Then one diagonal up a slab layer, like this. Then two out to the side, one and two. Then one out to the side. And right here, another temporary block, like so. And one more going forwards from it there. From here, we have one more slab behind that right there, directly behind. Then up a slab layer, one more directly out to the side, like so. One more out at an angle. Then two going out right here. Then two diagonal from this. That's one and two, like so. Then instead of two going out uh, at an angle and up a slab layer, one and so, one and two, like so. Then one going diagonal. Then a set of two out right here. And then we'll switch over to the smooth stone slabs, and we have three. Well, let's put one diagonal right here, and then two more behind it, like so. And this is the very tip of the wing right here. So, from this, we're next going to grab the... I don't have it in my inventory. The dark oak button again. We're going to place a temporary block on the forward edge of that smooth stone slab right there. Dark oak button there, select, and paste over. This will be for the red nav light on the left wing tip right here. In default, you can just use a uh, brick half slab in place of that slab that it's on right there. But this will be our nav light detail that we're using here. So, now working our way in towards the center for the trailing edge outline. Directly in towards the center from this last smooth stone slab right there, we're going to place one more smooth slab, smooth sand, <laughs> smooth stone slab right there, not smooth sandstone. Next, one going in towards the center right here. This will all be going uh, forwards at an angle this time, like so. Then directly in towards the center, a stone brick slab right there. Then one going in. Then directly in towards the center, drop down a slab layer. One top slab right there. Then three slabs going in. One, two, and three. Then one slab going in. Directly in towards the center, drop down a slab layer. One slab right there. And then switch over to the smooth stone slab. And in towards the center, we have one right there. Still in at an angle. Like so. So that stone brick detailing there was the ailerons on the outboard edge of the wing. And that smooth stone there will be the divider between that and the flap sections here. So, next, working our way in with the flaps now, back to the stone brick slabs. We have one stone brick slab directly in towards the center right there. Then directly in towards the center, a another temporary block, like so. And this time, on the trailing edge, these temporary blocks will be for the flap track fairings, which we'll get to later. Next, uh, going forwards from this temporary block, we have one more stone brick slab right there, and directly in towards the center, one right there, to make that a set of two. Then directly in towards the center again, down a half slab layer, we have one top slab, like so. Then two top slabs in towards the center. Going back from this innermost top slab right there, we have two temporary blocks, like so. And from that same top slab right there, we have one top slab diagonal, like so. Next, directly in towards the center, drop down a slab layer, we have one bottom half slab right there. And then directly towards the center, a single temporary block, like so. One more stone slab forwards from that there, stone brick slab that is still. Then two more in towards the center to make that a set of three. Then one more temporary block directly in towards the center right there. Next, going forwards from this temporary block, uh, we have one bottom half slab right there. And then directly in towards the center, drop down a slab layer, we have two top slabs in towards the center to join up with that stone brick slab right there from the trailing edge. So, hopefully everything should connect up for you nicely, otherwise you'll probably want to go through everything again and see if you missed something. But with that outline in place, everything should be looking just like this. 
So next up here, we'll be working on the top surface layering. So from the uh, root of the wing right here, from this very first layer that we have right here, where the slabs go up like this, we're going to be placing two smooth stone slabs going back from this at an angle, like so. Then one more going diagonal to it right there. And then diagonal from this right here, we have a cobblestone slab right there. The cobblestone here will be for the spoiler detailing along the wing here, which we'll be filling in after we finish off the layering outlines here. But then to finish off this last, uh, well not this last, this first layering outline right here, we just have this little tiny gap at the front right there. It's already kind of blocked in by that trapdoor right there, but we can just finish this with a single half slab behind it, like so. So working away along the leading edge now, from this next layer up right here, where this uh, bottom half slab goes into the top slab right there, we're next going to be placing three smooth stone slabs going back from the set an angle, like so. One, two, and three. Next, changing directions, we now have two stone slabs going back out at an angle, like this. Then one diagonal, and a single cobblestone top slab behind it, directly behind it, that is, like so. And then one slab diagonal right there. That should connect in with that stone slab right, or the uh, stone brick slab from the uh, trailing edge right there. For our next layer up right here, where we have this stone slab right there, we're going to be placing three smooth stone slabs going back in at an angle. One, two, and three. Then one smooth stone slab diagonal to it, out at an angle this time. Then a single cobblestone top slab directly behind it there. And one more diagonal to it, like so. And that should connect in with that stone, or the stone brick slab from the trailing edge. For our next layer up right here, we're next to be placing two smooth stone slabs back at an angle. One and two. Well, back in at an angle, I should say, like so. Then changing directions, we have two smooth stone slabs uh, going out at an angle, like this. And then one diagonal right there. And that'll connect up with that uh, top slab from the trailing edge. And for our final layering outline right here, from this stone slab right here, we're going to be placing a single smooth stone slab directly in towards the center, like so. One more behind it, and then one diagonal to it, like so. And that'll connect up with that stone brick slab from the trailing edge. So with all of the layering outlines now in place, we're just going to finish off that bit of the spoiler detailing that I mentioned with the cobblestone before filling all of this in. So starting right down here at the wing root, this little space right here is going to get filled in with the cobblestone. That'll connect in with that cobblestone top slab from the next layer up right there. Uh, top slab? No, that's a bottom slab, my bad. Cobblestone slab, end of the... that's as far as it needs to go. From this cobblestone slabs right there, we're going to be placing one more directly out to the... well, directly out from it, like so. Next, we have a smooth stone slab diagonal to it, right there, with a cobblestone slab directly out to the side. That'll be for the little gap there between the inboard ground spoilers and the outboard roll spoilers. So where that connects in with that cobblestone top slab going up right here, and then that one diagonal from it there. We're next going to be placing one directly out to the side right there. One more diagonal. That'll connect up with these two here from the next layer up. From this last one there, we have two more directly out to the side. One and two. And then one final one diagonal to it right there. And that'll finish off all of the spoiler detailing. So, next up here, everything within the wing outline and the layering outline for the next layer up is going to get filled in with the smooth stone slabs, just like we did to the horizontal stabilizers, but on a larger scale this time. So, all of this here is going to get filled in with the smooth stone. Like so. And then the same thing for the next layer up. And this little gap right there as well. And the next layer. And the next one. And this tiny little gap here in our final layer. Like so. So with that, that is the top surface of the wing done. And well, let's carry on with the underside layering. So from the wing root right here, starting from that uh, smooth stone upside down stair right there, we're next to be placing six bottom half slabs going back from this. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six, like so. And then while we're here to close up this gap, we'll just put a single slab in that space right there and a top slab coming out from it, like so. So for our next layer out, from the stone slab right here, we're going to be placing two smooth stone slabs back at an angle from this right here. So that's one and two, like so. Then three slabs, one, two, and three. 
and then going in this time, three slabs going back, one, two, and three. That should join up with that stone brick right there. Then for the next layout, from this uh, stone slab behind the temporary blocks right there, we're going to be placing three stone slabs going, or smooth stone slabs going back at an angle from this right here, so one, two, and three. Then another three slabs, one, two, and three. Then one diagonal from it right here, and then a cobblestone slab in that space right there. Even though the spoilers technically shouldn't be visible from the underside, that is a uh, full block right there, so we can't place a uh, smooth stone slab in its place. So we'll just have to make a compromise with the, the cobblestone slab right there. So once we have that for the next layer out here, from this stone slab that connects with the smooth stone slab right there, from that smooth stone slab, we're going to place one more going back from it, like so. Then three slabs going back at an angle, one, two, and three. Then one slab diagonal right here, and another cobblestone slab behind it, like so. For our next layout right here, we have this uh, stone slab behind the temporary blocks here. We're going to place a single smooth stone slab directly behind it right there. Then three going back at an angle, one, two, and three. And from that one we just placed one diagonal to it right there, so it should be next to that uh, smooth stone slab right there that was already there. So we have this four long, two wide L shape, like so. So for our final layering outline, from this stone slab right here, we're going to place a smooth stone slab directly behind it. Then two more going back at an angle, one and two, like so, to connect up with the stone brick slab right there. And for one final little detail, we can grab a stone button, and where we have this last stone brick slab right there, we'll go directly out from it and one forwards to this smooth stone slab right there, and place a stone button aligned perpendicular with the aircraft, like this, along the length of the wing. And once we have that, all that's left to do is once again fill all this in with the smooth stone. So just as we did with the top surface, anything within the outline of the wing itself and the outline of the next layer up gets filled in with the smooth stone slabs, just like this. And for the next layer up right here, keeping in mind as well what I mentioned about the uh, cobblestone slabs. So for this one, we can't place a smooth stone slab in its place there, so we'll just fill that in with the cobblestone slab instead. So the space with the smooth stone, that space can get filled in with smooth stone as well there. Smooth stone there and there. And that's the underside of the wing done. So, next up here, we'll be putting in the engine pylons. So let's start from the inboard pylon right here. That's the first temporary block marking going out right here. For this, we're going to grab the smooth stone slabs. We're going to, or smooth stone full blocks rather. We're going to knock out the rearmost of these two, leaving the forward one intact right here. We'll place a jungle trapdoor on the bottom half, connecting in with this, like so, in, in uh, the place of that temporary block we just cleared out with a smooth stone full block behind it right here. Then four more going back, one, two, three, and four, for a total of five. And then a single smooth stone top slab back from that right there. Then for the next pylon going out, we're just gonna do the same thing again. So clear out the rearmost temporary block right there, jungle trapdoor on the bottom half in its place, smooth stone full block below, then four going back, one, two, three, and four, and a smooth stone top slab behind it, like so. So once we have that, we'll next be working on the flap track fairings. So on the trailing edge this time, starting our way from the inboard once again. Underneath this temporary block right here, we're going to place a single smooth stone full block with four more going forwards. One, two, three, and four. That'll connect in with the uh, smooth stone top slabs right there. Then on the rear edge of this here, we're going to close the jungle trapdoor against that right there. Then skipping the rear block, we'll place a jungle trapdoor underneath the uh, second block right there and then two more going forwards, like so. For the next temporary block out right here, we're going to once again place a smooth stone full block underneath that temporary block right there, close the trapdoor against the rear edge, then three full blocks that going forwards this time, so that's one, two, and three, top slab forwards from that there, and then underneath the two center blocks, these four here, two jungle trapdoors right there. Next, going out here, from these two temporary blocks that we have this time, we're going to clear out the forwardmost one right there, place a half slab going forwards from it here on the bottom half, with a top slab below it, then a temporary block behind that top slab, then we'll grab an acacia button, place this on the rear edge of that, grab the replace tool, select the acacia button, clear that out, and then paste over. I'm pretty sure we've already... actually we might not have used the acacia button yet. In that case, the acacia button here in the aeroteam pack is a black texture, like this. Just use either a dark oak button or blackstone instead, in default. But from this here, we'll be placing three more top slabs going forwards from the bottom top slab right there. So that's one, two, and three. Half slab on top of that forwardmost one right there, and then one more going forwards. 
Then in this space right here, we can't place... Um, Oh dear, that just turned those into full blocks. So we can't place top slabs in that space right there, again, because they're already occupied. So we'll just place a cobblestone slab on the forward one there, and a stone brick slab on the rear one, and just fill in that space like so. So, going out for our last one right here, underneath this temporary block, we're going to place a smooth stone full block right there. Again, close a uh, jungle trap door against the rear edge right there. Then three full blocks going forwards right here. So that's one, two, and three. And a top slab forwards from that there. And underneath the two center blocks of these uh, four right here, again, two jungle trapdoors, like so. And I forgot to mention with this one right here, but that black button detail is for the fuel jettison nozzle on the rear edge of the uh, third uh, flap track fairing out. So that's what that's for. So, with all of our flap track fairings and pylons in place now, we can clear out all of the temporary blocks. So, anywhere where you have those, just knock them out, and that'll be everything for the general shape of the wing. The last thing we'll be doing for the wing here is to put in the winglet. Now, unlike some of our other tutorials where the winglets are optional and you can uh, leave the wingtip exposed here, no A340 was ever delivered without a winglet, so the section here is required. So for the winglet here, we're going to be grabbing our wool materials once more, and we'll be knocking out the last two of these three smooth stone top slabs, or half slabs, in the uh, very tip of the wing right here. So like this. From the rearmost block right there, we're going to place a wool full block in its place there, with a wool stair, regular stair, facing forwards, forwards from that right there. Then from the wool full block, we're going to place a wool stair uh, out diagonally and up from it, just like this, once again facing forwards. And then a dead brain coral fan on the rear face of that uh, stair right there. In the arrow team pack here, the dead brain coral fan is a white wool texture. In default, you could probably use either an upside down wool stair or just a full block in its place instead, but both of those will have kind of wonky shaping. So this is our uh, best approximation here with the arrow team pack. So the last thing here to do is place a temporary block going back from this right here, and then one more below it. Underneath this here, we're going to place a stone button on the underside aligned parallel with the aircraft, like this. We'll select that and then paste over both of those temporary blocks right there. And then we have one more going back from this wool full block right here, this time on the top half, so we'll place a temporary block going back right there, a stone button on the uh, top edge of that block right there, select that and paste over, like so. This will kind of represent the static wicks on the winglet right here, just like we did on the uh, stabilizers. But with that, that is everything for the wing done! So, all that's left to do now is just to mirror this on over to the right side of the aircraft. If you have whirled at it, this is very easy. All we're going to do is grab the uh, wooden axe, which is the wand in World Edit here. We'll select this top stone button right there by left clicking, that's the farthest point of the wing right here. Then we'll select the second position right below this uh, sign right there and the wing root. So drop a temporary block down right here below it, and then right click on this to set the uh, second position. Then we can clear out that block there. Next we'll stand on top of the aircraft right here, align with the center line. Face to the right side, perpendicular to the aircraft, type slash slash copy slash slash flip, then slash slash paste uh, dash A to paste this onto the right side of the aircraft right here. Now, if you don't have access to World Edit, you are going to have to rebuild this by hand on the right side here, and due to time constraints, I'm unfortunately not able to build the wing a second time on camera here, so you can just use the timestamps in the video description below to skip back to the start of the wings and build everything again on the right side in mirror fashion. But either way, just make sure you have your wing built on the right side of the aircraft here, and I will see you once that's done. So, with your wing on the right side of the aircraft now, there's just one last little asymmetry to worry about. So we're going to swap this red nav light right here on the right wing tip for its green counterpart. So for this, we're going to use the crimson button this time. We'll clear out that button right there, drop a temporary block in that place, place a crimson button on the forward edge right there, then select that with the replace tool and paste over. And for the texture pack alternatives for this here, if you used a button on the left wing tip still, you can probably just use a warped button instead for this wing tip here. Or if you used a brick slab on the left wing tip, you can just use a dark prismarine slab instead in place of that smooth stone half slab right there, and that'll be your best green color for this uh, green nav light here. But with that all sorted out, that is everything for the wings. Alright, so next up here, we'll be installing our four Rolls-Royce Trent 500 engines. We'll be starting with the left inboard engine right here. So where we have this first uh, engine pylon that we installed previously, underneath this, we're going to be placing two blocks going down with the white wall, one and two, right there. Now, out to either side of this here, on both sides of this block, we have an upside-down wall stair facing backwards from the bottom block right here. 
and a regular stair facing backwards on top of it, like so. Forwards from this now, we're going to be placing two blocks each, so that's one and two, one and two, one and two, and one and two. Then we'll grab the birch trapdoors and close a set of trapdoors against the sides right here. Same thing on the inboard side right here, two trapdoors there, and then a trapdoor on top of the forwardmost block of both right there. Then we have a single white carpet going back from those trapdoors there to round that off on top. Next, we're going to be putting in the intake fan here. So for this, we're going to be using the polished blackstone stairs. So starting in the center bottom block right here, we have an upside down polished blackstone stair facing to the left, just like this. Then another one facing to the left, right here. Then an upside down stair facing right on top of it. A regular stair facing right to the right of it. Then an upside down stair facing to the right, to the right of that right there. And finally, a regular stair facing to the left beneath it, like so. It's a bit of a wonky pattern at the moment, but it'll look a lot better once we have it covered up with the intake cowling here. So for that, we're going to grab the smooth stone stairs and slabs now. So from the right block right here, we have a smooth stone stair facing to the left, forwards from that right there. Then a jungle trapdoor underneath this block on the top half right there. Stone top slab in the center and a jungle trapdoor right there. Smooth sandstone stair facing to the right on top of that right there. Then an upside down stair facing to the right. Then a half slab up a slab layer in the center right there. And then an, uh, uh, an upside down stair facing to the left to the right of it, connecting just like this. Finally, on top here, we'll be placing a single light gray carpet on both of those upside down stairs right there. So those trapdoors will just help to emulate the slightly squished, flattened underside of the Trent 500 engines. And that's the intake cowling done. Next up here, behind this uh, bottom top slab right there, underneath the engine, we're going to be placing one, two, and three top slabs going back from it right there, with a wall this time. And then a birch trapdoor on the top half underneath that wall full block there. Next, on the left side only, we have one more jungle trapdoor going back from that trapdoor right there and then two birch trapdoors going back, like so. On the right side, it's just going to be three birch trapdoors. So that's one, two, and three, like so. That extra stone trapdoor right there is for a vent on the underside of the engine that's only on the left side. And then with the birch trapdoors, we'll just close two more against the sides of those blackstone stairs. One and two, and then one more on top on both sides, like so. In the center right here, to close off this gap, we're going to grab the black wool and place two blocks of black wool behind both of those stairs right there. And then, going back from the uh, top uh, stone trapdoor, <laughs> stone uh, half slab rather, we have a single wool half slab going back right there. And then we're going to use an interesting wool edit trick here to uh, blend in the engine pylon much more nicely. So for this, we're going to be using the piston. So we have two pistons facing up, going back from that half slab right there. And then we're going to shave off the top half of that, the uh, the wood, using some world edit trickery. So there are two ways to go about this. First, if you have access to world edit, what you're going to do is grab a redstone block, or any old way to power a piston, place a piston facing up anywhere you'd like, with a block of redstone beside it to power it like so. Then grab your replace tool, as we have before, and we'll select the bottom block right here, that's the base of the piston, and then paste over both of those pistons, like so. So with just the piston base there, that'll give you a much shallower and nicer angle for the uh, pylon connecting to the engine right here. Now, if you don't have access to world edit, but you do have access to commands, you can use a vanilla trick instead for this here. So the alternative for this here is the debug stick in vanilla Minecraft. So you get this with slash div at p debug underscore stick, like so. I have to use a different command on the server here. And once we have that, we are going to continuously left-click on this to select the extended property. Then we can just right-click on top of both of those right there to get just the base left over. And if you don't have access to any commands at all, you can probably just use two regular cobblestone blocks in that space right there instead. But this is a much nicer solution here that we're using. So once we have that, we're next to be placing in one more little detail here with the Acacia button. So only on the left side of the engine, again, another asymmetrical vent right here, on the bottom of these two exposed wolf full blocks right here, we have a single Acacia button right there. Or in default, a polished blackstone button instead. As you can see, that's a black button texture right there in the Aeroteam pack. So next up, going back right here, we're going to be putting in the exhaust cone. 
So from the top wall block right there, we have a single smooth stone full block with an upside down smooth sandstone stair beneath it right there. Then back from that there, a uh, polished blackstone brick slab, a top slab going back from the upside down stair right there. In the routine pack, as you can see, this is a nice dark uh, gray brick texture like this. Just use regular uh, stone bricks instead in default. And then above this right here, we have an upside down andesite stair, not a polish, just a regular andesite. And then an andesite top slab going back from that, like so. And then to finish off the exhaust cowling right here, we're going to grab the spruce signs. We have a spruce sign out to either side of the smooth sandstone stair right there. And then one out to either side of the andesite stair, like so. And then to blend that in with the end of the uh, pylon right here, we have a spruce trapdoor going back from the andesite top slab. So with the exhaust cone in place now, we can do a little bit more welded trickery on these stairs right here to improve the curvature a bit more. So instead of just having these regular stairs right here, we're going to place a regular stair just anywhere facing backwards, then one uh, facing to the left right behind it, like this. We'll select that and then paste over the top left stair right there. We'll do the same thing for the upside down stair. So upside down stair facing backwards, stair facing to the left behind it, select the corner stair and then paste over right there. This will just help to round off the engine a bit more realistically. And we can just switch around the direction of both of these right there to corner on the right side, like so. Select the upside down stair, paste over the bottom right one. Select the regular stair, paste over the top right one, like so. And then lastly, for some more improvements on the intake fan right here, we can get this fan looking a lot nicer by using corner stairs instead of regular stairs for these right here. So with the polished blackstone stairs, we have a stair facing to the right, stair facing forwards to the right of it there. We'll select that and then paste over the top left one right there. Then we'll place a regular stair facing to the right and then the stair facing forwards to the right of it. Select that, place up, uh, paste it over the top center, like so. Then we have an upside down stair facing to the left, stair facing forwards to the left of it there. Select that corner stair, paste over the bottom center. Then a regular stair facing to the left, stair facing forwards to the left of it. Select that corner stair there and paste over the uh, bottom right one, like so. And for a final detail on this fan right here, we can place two temporary blocks going in the center space right there. Then one more just anywhere like this. We'll grab the acacia button and a jungle button. We have an acacia button underneath this temporary block right here, aligned parallel with the aircraft, like this. Actually perpendicular to the aircraft, my bad. So like this. We'll select that and then paste over the bottom temporary block right there. Then a jungle button on top of this, again aligned perpendicular with the aircraft here. Select that and then paste over the top temporary block, like so. Then clear both of those out right there. And this will give you the black and white intake spinner aligned between the two blocks, like so. Again, if you don't have access to world edit, you can leave all of these out and leave it as it was previously, but this is a much better looking solution right here that we're using. So with that, that is everything for one of the engines. Now we just have to do the same thing three more times. So I'll be doing this on camera here still, since there are some asymmetries to cover on the right side, but the other engine here is exactly the same as it is right here. So we'll just be repeating this process again. There's no uh, further uh, tweaks or anything we have to do for the other pylon right here. It's exactly the same pylon on this side, or on the outboard side, that is. So that's two wool full blocks going down to the four most smooth stone stair, or smooth stone full block right there. Here's where the stair comes in, I was getting ahead of myself. Upside down stair uh, facing backwards beside both of those bottom blocks right there. Regular stair facing forwards on top of that. Two blocks going forwards from all four of those stairs. Then the trapdoors closed against the outside edges. One and two. Trapdoor on top. And a carpet going back from both of those trapdoors there. Then for the intake fan right here, we have an upside down stair facing to the left in the center block right there. Another stair facing to the left, to the left right there. Upside down stair facing to the right on top of that. Regular stair facing to the right now. And an upside down stair facing to the right on uh, to the right of that there. And finally, regular stair facing to the left below that. Ah, there we go. Then for the intake cowling right here with the smooth stone stairs, we have a smooth stone regular stair uh, facing to the center under, uh, in front of both of those uh, outboard blocks right there on the bottom edge. Then an upside down stair facing to the center on top of both of those there. With the slabs now, we have a half slab, up a slab layer from that right there, and then a top slab beneath this, like so. And then round this off with an upside down 
not an upside down, a uh, top half gentle trapdoor underneath both of those regular stairs there, and then a light gray carpet on top of the upside down stairs. Then we have a birch trapdoor going forwards, not forwards, backwards from both of those carpets right there. Then we'll close the trapdoor against the sides of uh, both of these blackstone stair blocks right there. Then on the right side only, that's three uh, birch trapdoors going back right there. Then a gentle trapdoor going back from that gentle trapdoor right there to give you a set of two for that extra vent on the left side there. And then two gentle trapdoors, not gentle trapdoors, two birch trapdoors going back from the uh, gentle trapdoor right there. The wool trapdoor. Then three wool top slabs back from the smooth stone top slab there, and a wool trapdoor back from that, like so. And then the acacia button on the bottom block of the uh, left side of the engine right there. Then we have a wool half slab back from the smooth stone slab right there. Then your two pistons going back right there. I'll use the debug stick this time just for consistency, or your world edit trick if you'd like. So once that's all in place there, the next thing to do is polish off the intake fan a bit more here. So the upside down staircase to the left, corner stair right there, select that and paste over. I'll just steal it from the inboard engine since we've already done that there. That corner stair in the center and the upside down right corner stair on the top left and the regular corner stair on the bottom right like so. Two temporary blocks in the center, temporary block, full block, just anywhere. Then with the buttons here, we have the acacia button aligned perpendicular with the aircraft underneath this here. Select that paste over the bottom one there. Gentle button aligned uh, on top, aligned perpendicular with the aircraft. Select and paste over the top temporary block, like so. Then for the exhaust cone right here, the smooth stone full block on the top block going back right there. Smooth stone upside down stair facing backwards. The whatever this slab is here, polished blackstone brick slab going back from the upside down stair. And then the andesite stair upside down facing backwards, andesite top slab back from that there. And the spruce signs, spruce sign out to either side of the upside down smooth stone stair and the uh, andesite stair, like so. And then finally, for the little bit of the flange connecting the. Where'd it go? I must have gotten rid of it at some point. Spruce trapdoor behind the uh, acacia, not acacia, the andesite top slab right there for the little bit of the darkened flange that connects to the uh, rear edge of the engine pylon. Like so. And then we still have to corner off these uh, regular stairs right here. So I'll just set up my uh, little system for that here. So we have the regular and upside down corner stairs there. Select the regular one, paste over the top left, upside down, paste over the bottom left. Then switch the directions on these stairs here. Select the regular corner stair, paste over the top right, and the upside down corner stair, paste over the bottom right. And then we can clear out that setup like so. Finally, there's one last detail to put in here that I also forgot on the inboard engine. Whoops, we're going to grab a jungle button this time. And on the inboard side of this engine right here, on top of the forwardmost top uh, birch trapdoor right here, the one that's closed against the side of this, we're going to place a temporary block right there between those two edges, like so. And on top of this temporary block right here, we're going to place a jungle button aligned perpendicular with the aircraft here. Select that and then paste over. This is for a small little aerodynamic streak on the inboard side of the engine only right here, and it just helps to improve the airflow over the wing. And we'll apply this exact same thing to the inboard engine right here, since I did forget that. So temporary block right there between those two trapdoors, and then paste that strike over, like so. So once we have that, we're just going to be repeating this engine twice more on the right side of the aircraft with some slight differences. So that straight will mirror, all of the bolt of the body will be exactly the same, but asymmetrical details like those two vents right there will stay exactly as they are here. They are only on the left side of the engine, no matter which side of the aircraft it's on, because the internal engine itself on the real aircraft is asymmetrical and does not mirror. So to do this, we're just going to be repeating the same process we did for the bolt of the engine right here. So Two wolf full blocks down from the forward most smooth stone uh, full block right there. Then the stairs to the left and right, like so. Two blocks forwards from both of these right here. Then the trapdoors closed against the forward most block only, and then one on top right there. Then a carpet going back from both of those. Then we'll put in our intake fan right here, and this is also exactly the same design. 
since the uh, intake fan itself doesn't mirror. So, upside down stair facing to the left, then a uh, another one facing to the left right there. Upside down stair facing to the right on top of it there. Regular stair facing to the right. Upside down stair facing to the right. Then underneath this, a regular stair facing to the left, like so. Then the uh, regular smooth stone stairs right there, with the upside down smooth stone stairs on top. Trapdoor underneath on both sides right there, and a top slab in the center. Then a carpet on top of both of those uh, stairs right there, and a half slab in the center. Next, we have three wool top slabs going back from the smooth stone uh, top slab right there, the birch trapdoor back from that. Then, again, here's where the asymmetry comes in. So, just three trapdoors going back on the right side with the birch trapdoor right here, just as we did on the left, because that uh, vent detail right there stays on the left side. So that's one extra gentle trapdoor going back right there, and then your two birch trapdoors. We'll close the birch trapdoors against the sides of the intake fan right there, and a trapdoor on top as well. Trapdoors closed against that. And then a single wool half slab in the center right there. Two pistons going back, and then uh, paste over the uh, extended variant right there to get rid of the uh, tip of the piston. Then we have the acacia button on the left side of the bottom block right there, that's exposed just as we did on the left side, so those two uh, features right there are asymmetrical. And what is not asymmetrical is that aerodynamic straight. So that will go on the left side of the engine right here, because it's on the inboard side of the aircraft. So just like this temporary block right there, grab your general button, select, and paste over. Once we have that, let's get the exhaust cone in place here. So smooth stone full block back from the top block right there, upside down stair back from it like so, the polished blackstone brick slab right there, Andesite stair above it, upside down, and an andesite top slab going back. Spruce trapdoor behind that there, and then spruce signs out to either side of the two upside down stairs, like so. Then we have to corner off the stairs, so with the upside down stairs and regular stairs, we'll start with the right side here, so select the regular corner stair there, paste over the top right. Upside down corner stair, paste over the bottom right. Switch the directions on both of these stairs here. Regular corner stair to the left, paste over the top left. Upside down corner stair, paste over the bottom left, like so. And then for the intake fan here, a lot of corner stairs in this aircraft, or in these engines that is. So, upside down stair facing to the left, then corner that like so, paste over the bottom center. Regular stair, uh, regular stair facing to the forwards, to get that right corner stair right there, then paste over the top center. Upside down corner stair facing to the right, regular stair facing forwards, or upside down stair facing forwards. Select the corner stair there and paste over the top left. Regular stair facing to the left, regular stair facing forwards. Select that corner stair and paste over. What a mess of stairs. Once we have that, we have our two temporary blocks in the center space. Temporary block just anywhere. The two buttons, we have the gentle button on the top right there, and the acacia button on the underside, both aligned perpendicular with the aircraft. Paste the acacia button over the bottom block, and the gentle button over the top block, like so. I believe that should be everything for our third engine right here. So with that, we'll then be building our final engine. So for the outboard right engine right here, that's exactly the same as that one we just did right there. So. Two full blocks going down right there, the upside down and regular stairs to either side. Two full blocks forwards from all four of those stairs right there. Close the trapdoors against the forwardmost block of those two. Trapdoor on top. Carpet going back from both of those trapdoors right there. Then the intake fan right here. So starting with just the regular stairs this time. We have to start with the regular stairs by the way as well because they will get block updates when the uh, uh, spinner, not the spinner, when the uh, intake cowling gets placed in forwards from it here. So this just prevents that from happening here. So another regular stair, or upside down stair facing to the right right there. Keep getting my stairs mixed up, my apologies. Upside down stair facing to the right on top of that. Regular stair facing to the right, upside down stair facing to the right, and a regular stair facing to the left beneath this. Then with our smooth sandstone stairs, regular stair facing inwards from the bottom blocks right there. Upside down stair facing inwards on top of both of those, there we go. 
gentle trapdoors beneath it. A smooth sandstone top slab between those right there. Light red carpet on top of both of those upside down stairs, and a top slab or a half slab in the center. Then close the birch trapdoors against the sides of the uh, intake fan right there. Trapdoor on top. Then three wool top slabs back from the top slab in the center right there. Birch trapdoor behind. And on the left side, again, we have our extra jungle trapdoor right there for the vent. And then two birch trapdoors back there. That's three birch trapdoors on the right side. And then while we're here, that acacia button on the bottom block of those uh, left blocks right there. Then we have a birch, not a birch, <laughs> a, a wool half slab back from the smooth stone half slab right there. Two pistons facing up back from that there, and then with the debug stick or world edit to uh, get just the base in place there. Smooth stone full block back from the top wall block right there. Smooth stone upside down stair facing backwards from that there. A polished blackstone brick top slab. And a site upside down stair above it. And a site top slab going back. And a spruce trapdoor behind it. Then the spruce signs out to both of the upside down stairs right there, out to both sides. And then the last corner assembly for the wool stairs here. So, regular stair facing to the right on top of the top right, upside down stair facing to the right on top of the bottom right, and switch around the directions come on, to be facing to the left, like so. Upside down stair over the bottom left, regular stair over the top left. Then clear that out there. Then we, oops, I forgot the straight here. So. Again, this is on the inboard side on the right side here, so that's between those two on the left-hand side of the engine right here. Juggle the button on top of that right there and paste over. And just as we did on the left side, I'll just steal the uh, corner stairs for the intake fan right here. So just pasting over the respective stairs. So bottom right over the bottom right and top left over the top left right there facing down the engine this time, that is. Then two temporary blocks forwards from the center blocks right there, temporary block, full block, just anywhere. Location button perpendicular with the aircraft underneath it, journal button on top of it, select the journal button, paste over the top temporary block, location button, paste over the bottom temporary block. And with that, that is everything for all four of our Trent 500 engines. So with the engines now in place, that is everything for the in-flight aircraft. If you are building this aircraft in flight with the landing gear retracted, then you are done with this tutorial. Congratulations! Just skip on ahead to the outro section via the timestamps in the description below for some last important information, and I will see you then. Otherwise, let's get going on the landing gear. Alright, so for the landing gear here, we'll be starting first with the nose gear. So on the underside of the nose section right here, where we have these three quartz bottom half slabs for the nose gear door, we're going to be knocking out the center one of these three right here, and the one immediately behind it right there, leaving only that forwardmost one intact there. Now in this space above that last block right there, we're going to place a mossy stone brick wall with a diorite block behind it, like this, and then another diorite block above it to close off that cap. Now in the R team pack, as you can see here, the mossy stone brick wall is a stone wall texture, just like this. Just use a stone bricks instead in default. But beneath this here, we have one more wall going down, then a crimson fence below this here, and in this space, we're going to be placing a torus flower. Now, in vanilla Minecraft, you can't place these torus flowers just anywhere. So we're going to grab an endstone block right here, place this just anywhere else, then place a torus flower on top of it, grab your replace tool, select that, and then paste over. This is a, um, well, in default, the torus flower is this kind of rounded model texture, or model like this. So we texture it with the black wool for uh, one by one gears like this. If you're in default without this texture, then your torus flower is going to look significantly uglier than this for nose gears, so just use a black wool full block in that case. And then to finish off closing up this gap right here, we're going to place a, a second diorite full block going forwards from that right there, and a third to close off that final bit of the gap right there. Next, we're going to grab the uh, quartz stairs, and for this section of the opened gear doors out to the side right here, beside the main strut, we're going to place a regular quartz stair, facing out to either side of that bottommost uh, stone wall right there. And then underneath both of these, a single birch trapdoor on the top half. 
So with that, we're next to be working on some world edit tricks to make this a little bit more nice. So first off, let's grab the stone button. Out to either side of the uh, torus flower right here, we're going to place a stone button. So temporary block out to the side right here. Stone button on the side, select and paste over. Stone button, select and paste over. On the rear edge right here, we're going to grab a lever. We're going to have a temporary block right there, a lever flipped facing up on the rear edge of this block right here, and then paste over that temporary block. Above this here, it's going to be a lever flipped facing down on the rear edge of that block, select and then paste over right behind the uh, stone fence right there. Oh, I did forget to mention that. So the crimson fence here is a stone texture in the arrow team pack. Now, in default as well, I'd probably just recommend using another one of the stone brick balls going down. But for this fence right here, it looks a little bit silly at the moment, but we're going to place three of these back to front right here, select the center one right here, and then paste over right there. So that'll give you the kind of tapered uh, main strut in the center right there, and then the connections forward and aft for the uh, that lever assembly right there is the torque link. And in front of this here, we're going to have a temporary block right there, and then a torch on the front face of that. Select and paste over for the nose taxi light. On either side of this torch right here, we're going to place a temporary block out to the sides with a stone button on the outer side right here. So for the left one right here, stone button on the left side, select and paste over right there. Stone button on the right side, select and paste over right there. And this is going to make these two little pins out to the side right here that are the nose wheel steering actuators. Then above the torch right here, another temporary block going up, and we have a lever flipped facing... Oh, that block's occupied, I'm just going to place a temporary block elsewhere. A lever flipped facing up, select that, paste over that block right there. Then one more temporary block above it, a lever flipped facing down. I can just grab that same one from the torch link right there, and then paste over above. And that is going to be for the drag strut connecting the uh, main shock strut in with the retraction mechanism up there. Clear all of that out, and the last thing we're going to do is make these walls a little bit less ugly. So, for the bottom wall right here, we're going to place down a wall just anywhere, then one going forwards from it right there. Select the rear one of these two with the replace tool, then paste over the bottom uh, wall right there. That'll keep it from uh, walling off with the gear doors right there, so it's nice and isolated, while giving it the forward connection for that drive start right there. Then the top one, we're going to want to have all four uh, directional connections. So make a little 3x3 three three grid with this right here, and then one right above it to give it the center wall pillar. Select that, and then paste over the top wall right there. And that is everything for the nose gear. So we can clear out all of that wall mess. And again, if you are without uh, access to any of these world edit charts in vanilla Minecraft, you can just leave it as it was with uh, walls in this place right here. I'd probably recommend using a fence gate in this space right here, maybe a birch fence gate or something like that, to give a little bit of the indication of the drive strut, but this is a much nicer alternative here, of course, if you can. So, with that all in place, well, let's be working on the main gear. So, come all the way down to the underside of the trailing edge of the wing right here. We're going to be starting on the left side first. So, for this, let's see, underneath the uh, cobblestone slab right there that's exposed, that's left over from the um, spoiler mechanisms up there, we're going to turn that top slab into a cobblestone full block right there. Below this, we have two mossy stone brick walls going down, and then a stone brick top slab underneath that wall and one more top slab going out. Behind both of these here, we have two black wool full blocks, and two black wool full blocks going forwards. Then out to either side here, a jungle button on the sides of the uh, both of the black wool full blocks. And these will be for the wheel rims right here. I believe I forgot to mention that for the buttons on the side of the course as well up there, but those stone buttons are the wheel rims as well. And then out to either side of the top slabs here, we're going to place a stone button with world edit, that is, tricked onto the sides of the top slabs, like so. So with the bogey in place now, we'll next be grabbing a uh, smooth stone slab. We have a smooth stone top slab out to the side of the bottom uh, wall right there. Smooth stone full block on top of it. One more full block going forwards, and then two slabs on top of that to turn those into full blocks. And that'll be the gear door on the side right there. Next, we'll come back to the main strut right here. And into the center of that cobblestone full block right there, we're going to knock out that top slab going in right there, 
and place a gentle trapdoor on the top half in its place right there. Next, uh, into the center of the top uh, stone wall right there, we have a temporary block right there. And then this, that's going to be a lever, flit facing upwards to the right side of that block, facing inwards basically, paste it over right there. That'll be for the side strut right there, or kind of the best indication we can do in this tiny scale. And then, lastly, for the little bit of the opened uh, gear bay right here, this center bl uh, full block of wool into the center of that trapdoor that we just placed, we're going to knock that out and replace it with a wool top slab, like so. And that's just going to give you this tiny little glimpse into the uh, main gear well right here. On the rear aircraft, when the wing gear door opens, the spot where it previously joined with the belly gear door right here is exposed from the outside, so you get a little bit of a glimpse into the gear bay right there. So that's what that's representing. Then, lastly, we can do some more world edit additions to the uh, main strut right here. Well, first, actually, let's grab a crimson fence gate, place this behind the bottommost wall right there, and open this towards the front. And that'll be for the torque link right there on the uh, trailing edge of the strut. And now on the rear A340, the main strut of the landing gear is at a kind of rearward slanted angle. So to represent this, what we're going to do here is with world edit, uh, we're going to place two walls front to back, like this. We'll select the foremost one with the rear connection right there, paste it over the bottom one, and then the rear one right there with the front connection. Select that and paste it over the top one, like so. So that'll give it kind of that illusion of a uh, rearwards uh, angle like this. And that is all there is to it for the outboard main gear right here on the A340. So we can just clear that out and do the same thing on the right side. So cobblestone full block right there. Turn that, or top slab that is, getting ahead of myself. We're going to turn that into a full block. Knock out the top slab in towards the center right there. Replace it with a jungle trapdoor on the top half. Replace that wool full block right there with a wool top slab. Beneath the cobblestone full block right there, two stone walls going down and a stone top slab underneath it, stone brick top slab that is, one more going out from it, then two black wool behind, two black wool forwards, jungle buttons on the sides of the black wool full blocks right there. I don't believe I mentioned this on the left side, or at all in this tutorial actually. No I did, we already used the jungle buttons there, good, okay. So yeah, jungle buttons are the, the white wool buttons, just use stone instead if, in default if you have to, but that better matches the color of the real uh, rooms right here. So. Now we're going to use the stone buttons on the sides of the uh, stone top slabs right there, tricked in place with world edit. Then we have the crimson fence gate behind the uh, bottom block of the two walls right there for the uh, torque link. Smooth stone top slab out to the side of the bottom wall right there, smooth stone full block above it, and uh, one going forwards, then turn these two above it into full blocks, like so. Then from the top of the two uh, walls right there, temporary block in towards the center, that'll be a lever flipped facing upwards. Ooh, there we go. Select and paste over that temporary block. And then the two walls. So front to back, just like this. Select the rear one, paste over the top block. Forward one, paste it over the bottom block, like so. So that's it for the main landing gear here, the outboard landing gear that is. We have one final special for the A340 right here. So as you may know, the A340 has an additional center main landing gear. On the 300, it's just a uh, single set of wheels. On the A340, it's a beefy double bogey as well, just like the outboard ones. So for this, we're going to come to the center blocks right here. As you'll see, the gear door extends all the way through the center. That's because it's three gear doors in one. So there's the two outboard gear doors and the gear doors for the center gear right here. So this rearmost one right here in the center row is going to get knocked out right there. In this space above right there, we're just going to place a single diorite full block to close off that gap. Then a mossy uh, brick wall going down from it there, and a second one going down. Beneath this, we have a smooth stone top slab, like so. Then a black wool full block behind it, right here. Then out to either side of the black wool full blocks right here, we're going to place a dead fire coral fan on both sides. In the R-Team pad here, this is a black wool vertical slab. This will give you a two block wide section here, offset between block layers so it's perfectly symmetrical with the aircraft. In default, you'll probably have to use full blocks on uh, both sides right here for a three wide seg uh, segment. It'll be slightly uh, offset from the uh, main gear right here and a little bit wider than it should be, but better than it being too slim. So once that's in place, we'll next 
drop a Crimson Fence Gate behind the uh, wall right here. Again, open it towards the front for the torque link on this side of uh, the uh, bogey. And forwards from this, an iron bar right there. We can then place the same stone buttons on either side of the uh, stone top slab right there, with world in it, like so. Then a lever on the underside of the blocks uh, out from the wall right here. So on the left side, lever right there, flipped facing in towards the center. On the right side, lever right there, flipped facing towards the center. For the two side braces on the center gear right here. Finally, some last world of the tricks. So for the uh, iron bar right here, we're going to want to give this a full connection. So that means three back to back like this. Select the center one right there, then paste over that iron bar, like so, and clear those out. And then for the top uh, stone wall right there, we don't want any of the side connections right there. It just goes straight up to connect in. So we're going to place an iron, not an iron, a mossy stone brick wall just anywhere. Select that, then paste over the top one. This bottom one right here now, we do want to connect off to the sides right here with these two side braces, while also keeping that forward connection with the iron bars there. So we're going to place two back to back, then two out to the sides right here, like this. Select that center one, then paste over the bottom wall, like so. And before we're finished here, some final last details I accidentally missed out from my notes. So behind this uh, crimson fence right here on the center gear, we're going to place a, oops, a temporary block right there with a stone button on the rear edge right there. Select that and paste over. Then on the outboard gear right here, that iron bar reminded me, we're going to want an iron bar forwards from the bottom wall right there. As you'll see, that'll kind of mess up the connection we had right there, so I'm just going to grab the uh, wall with world edit from the left side, paste it over on the right right there. Then a crimson fence gate closed against that top wall right there, and again, that'll mess up our connection, so we have to do the uh, lever flipped facing in towards the center right there for the side brace, and then again I'll just grab from the other side, paste over that angled wall right there. Again, my apologies for missing that out, but a quick tiny little fix right there. So that top uh, fence gate right there represents the uh, drag brace on the main strut right here. And this iron bar here, same as on the center gear, is for the wiring harness running up the front of the shot strut right there. So we'll just do the same thing on the left side now. So iron bar forts in that bottom wall right there. Fence gate from the top wall, we have to replace that lever facing up on the inside of that block right there, paste over from the top wall, and then just paste over our walls from the right side. So, rear wall right there over the bottom wall, and forward wall over the top one, like so. That just helps to add just a little bit more life to the landing gear right here. But with that all done now, that is everything for all four of the landing gear, and that is everything for this tutorial. So, congratulations on completing the Airbus A340-600! Thank you so much for choosing a narrow team design! We hope that you enjoyed building it, and we hope that you enjoy having it as a part of your Minecraft world. Do feel free to use this in any kind of publicly available project you like, given that you, of course, provide proper credit to the Aero team for these designs. So, if you have built this aircraft, let us know! We'd love to see how you're using our designs. A link to our Discord server is in the video description below, feel free to drop on in and show us what you've done. If you enjoyed, please do consider subscribing to the Air Team channel to be the first to see our new aircraft when they come out. Make sure to have a look through the 1 to 1 scale playlist on our channel as well for more builds on the scale to see if there's anything else that catches your interest. Also, check out our second channel, Air Team Gaming, where we have more fun content with the team outside of Minecraft, like Train Simulator and Flight Simulation live streams. Anyways, that is just about it. So, thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.